Welcome back to Rose Education, this is Ed. Today I'm going to be talking about FCAL. Now, this is not my first video. You'll find my first video in the description below if you'd like to watch it after this one. I'm going to go through to diligence and then dive into the technical analysis right after. Any point of the video, if you have any questions, make sure to mention down in the comments below or through our free Discord in the description below that acts as a chat room, a discussion room during trading sessions. Make sure to drop a like to this video to help the channel grow, subscribe, and leave your notifications on. A lot of you folks have watched my videos a lot but never subscribed, so please, please consider subscribing because it helps show YouTube that my content is valuable. Let's jump right into it. FCEL. So, in short, they are a global leader in delivering clean, efficient, and affordable fuel cell solutions configured for the supply, recovering, and the storage of energy. So right off the bat, we get to recognize him as uh, a green energy solution with different products such as their main products are SureSource 1500 that delivers around 1.4 megawatts of clean and affordable power. And then next thing is their Source 3000 which delivers 2.8 megawatts of continuous power as well. And then moving on, you have your 3.7 megawatts sure source 4000 that delivers high efficient power now currently this one here is an ultra clean power with an industry leading electrical efficiency of approximately 60 percent so really looking promising there that is their main products now one of the things that they actually have out of many of their supplies are hydrogen so their supplies are electricity heating and cooling hydrogen Recovery is pipeline, carbon capture, and hydrogen. Storage as well solutions for um, other products such as including as well hydrogen as well. So they have a massive pipeline of products. Now the one thing I want to really focus on today is hydrogen. So as we know, hydrogen has a lot of future. And I'll show you exactly the demand estimate for hydrogen. And so when you think about it, this is their tri-generation direct fuel cell power plant. You have usable heat from usable heat you can have it goes to anaerobic digesters and then gets you biogas from biogas you get goes back into the plant and then from the plant you have ultra clean power that goes to waste treatment centers for instance and then you have hydrogen hydrogen that goes on to on-site hydrogen fueling stations or just fueling stations for vehicles and we keep talking about this massive thing about Hydrogen is the future, hydrogen cells, EV. This one here has a massive potential just for the hydrogen itself. Now, on an industrial application, what you have is clean energy, sorry, clean natural gas goes into the tri-generation direct fuel cell power plants, and that gets you ultra power, clean power, usable heat, and hydrogen on top of that. So it's not just one thing, it is three things in one, just from clean natural gas in this case. So the metal processing, glass manufacturing, petrochemical material handling. Now remember, this one does not need natural gas in there. It uses biogas, which is somewhat of a form of a natural gas, but it's different because it comes in from anaerobic digesters, coming in from waste materials from waste treat wastewater treatment centers. So that is significant where you're using something that usually is not usable from energy in this direct sense and making it usable for transportation. And that really puts it on top. Now the next thing here is try to check anything new in terms of their news before going on to hydrogen consumption estimate level. So first thing, fuel cell energy seeks to have project award restored. And let's zoom in just a little to help you all folks reading on your phones. Uh, fuel cell Inc. A Kentucky pays tech high tech manufacturer clean energy fuel cell announced today that the state regulator have improperly resynced RFP awards for three fuel cell projects previously selected in shared clean energy facility programs, putting its state high-tech manufacturing jobs growth at risk. The risked awards were given to solar development projects previously ordered to be disqualified by the Public Utility Regulatory Authority. By any measure, this wholly improper eliminates the fact that deep slash PURA's own process lacks integrity said the CEO, either DPRA must honor the original awards or we will have no choice but to reevaluate our in-state growth prospects and potentially modify our hiring plans. Unfortunately, this is not the first time that DEEP has taken such action instrumental to the state's homegrown fuel cell industry. 
So it is interesting to what's going to happen there. Not exactly sure about where I can comment. There's a lot of things that are happening politically at the moment. And it's a little bit hard to say, A, it is one way or another. Now, the, the representative David Akronti, uh, Democrat from Danbury, House Chair of the Energy and Technology Committee, stated, Fuel cell energy is committed to our state and it's important that our agencies run fair, competitive auctions that give them opportunities to succeed. Now, this is a state matter. So Biden coming in, I don't think really it has any uh, direct effect when it comes into state matter since Biden really leads in a federal matter. Will it have any, let's say, influence? Maybe, I can't tell. But all in all, it looks like they having a little bit in terms of issues with the awards part doesn't really affect revenue directly but affects hiring cost of sales. Now, the next thing we want to look at is the recent SEC filings. So, just recently, they had an agreement with Orion Credit Agreements, and the big thing about this one here is this small, tiny paragraph that got my attention. Also, as previously disclosed on November 30th, the company, its subsidiary grantors, and the, un the Orion agent entered into a payoff letter with respect to Orion Credit Agreement, pursuant to which, on December 7th, 2020, the company paid off its indebtedness to Orion Agent and the lenders and thereby terminated the Orion Credit Agreement and Orion Facility. So they have no debt there between one another. All set, all settled. So we can close the books on that. Which is positive, by the way. The next thing is there are around 40 million shares that were sold. The price is not mentioned on their website, but if you go dig into the SAC filing, you get to see that the current price was somewhere around 650 per share. So it says right here, the selling stockholder agrees to sell the underwriters 14.69 million shares of common stock. Oh, sorry, of, um, of common stock in each case at a price of the public of 650 per share. So that gives you a bit of an idea on some of these costs in terms of the shares that was on December 1st so that was a bit ago they're offering close of December 4th and it did raise around 162.5 million dollars so that goes on towards their valuation before going on to the valuation this is from IEA.org you can go on and check it out they have really nice statistics in general the hydrogen consumption or hydrogen global demand increases per year. So you get to see in the last couple of decades, that has been a massive increase in metric tons. Now, the biggest things that in terms of the current policies goes to passenger cars, vehicle refu refueling stations, buses, electrolysis, trucks, buildings, and F-Cell has... Uh, basically solutions for all these and hydrogen demand is expected to skyrocket as well later on in the years because of a lot of different companies uh, using that hydrogen uh, cells as the next future thing before going on to uh, their valuation just a quick thing in terms of the fact sheets I took this one from Joe Biden's platform so some of the things that we might expect in terms of catalyst for FCL of course Biden says that he's taking it first day to uh, reverse the Paris Agreement stuff and try to go on towards a greener future. Of course, um, FCEL does have a, a really strong interest in all these stuff. So first thing, work with Congress to enact the 2021 legislations to basically put a wide net zero emissions no later than 2050. And guess who, who has uh, stations that gives you clean energy? FCEL. Now, the next thing here, make historical investments in clean energy and innovation. FCEL might benefit some of that money. Acceleration and deployment of clean, clean technology throughout your economy. Again, FCEL. <laughs> right here, Biden will set a target of reducing carbon footprint, footprint off the U.S. building stock by 50% in, by 2035. So that is massive. Um, and I think, yep, that kind of thumbs up everything the rest doesn't really affect um fcl and this is not a campaign so quick thing here market cap is around 2.8 billion dollars net income is around negative 100 million and their sales is around 6 to 4.9 million they are still a small 
value company. That's the stock style. Now, I couldn't find any analysis from their side. But if we were to look into their financials quickly. And then diving on towards seeing any recent things that are happening. The revenues year over year seems to be a little bit still. Now quarterly, it seems to be from 2020 in terms of the ending month of 7th. Uh, so that's, I believe, I think that's their third quarter, not September. Um, it looks like what we're seeing here is a decrease on revenue. But when you look into the current assets, there is an increase in current assets from quarter to quarter. Now, the next thing we want to look at is their valuation. So their valuation here, price over earnings, it's 10.8. It is outperforming SP500 by somewhere around 2.5 times more, two and a half times better. Now, price over book, it really looks ugly because it's 29 compared to 3.8 of an SP500 average. Price over sales is 26.2, it looks a lot worse than the 2.7 off the SP500. So, definitely, there is a little bit of issues there when we're looking at it. Now, if you were to look into the history, price over book at the current time which is 29.0, hasn't been an issue for FCL before 2019. Price over sales seems to be the big thing with the rally is that it really outperformed the SP500 massively when you look into their sales and their book. Now, it happened before in 2010 and it did adjust in terms of uh, that price per book. Now, price per earning, I don't have enough information for that. Before moving forward, we can try to look into their income statement and we'll go on towards quarterly. This gives us an insight to the last few quarters. We get to see that we did have a high number year on year on terms of the quarter in 2019, uh, but it looks like for the recent four quarters, one of the best performing ones was last quarters or last two quarters. Uh, Frank. Now, the next things we're looking at here is their operating income is not looking the best, but their net income seems to be doing quite fine this quarter, but not as good as it was year over year. Now, the next thing we want to look at is their insider activities. So, their insider activities, what we have here is more acquisitions that happen across the board for a lot of their insiders. Still looks good. It's... Um, Always looking amazing when you see the company's uh, board members still investing in this one. Now it comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? For that, we need to go a little bit more into technical analysis. So on a one week perspective, what we get to see, it really looks bullish on all scales. Momentum is up. William percent R is overbought, which is a little bit of an issue, but it has been overbought for a while. ADX shows in a very, very strong trend. MACD shows chosen that it's pushing really nicely and moving averages are all bullish. 10 SMA is above 30 EMA and it's above the 50 SMA. Now, on a one day perspective, what we get to see here is an MACD that is curving up. It's saying a reversal is likely. Now, ADX is around above 50. That's where negative reversals are likely and it's been there for a while because it's an overextended push. Now, William percent R is still overbought and that is dangerous because that says at some point, it's going to correct itself, but when is it? That's the question that we need to answer. Momentum looks back to being positive, a uh, really nice push. Moving averages are all pushing forward. If you see an incline moving average similar to this one, it shows you that we're doing something good. Now, 10 SMA is above 30 MA, that is bullish. Above 50 SMA and above the uh, 200 SMA. Now, between the trading action zone is between 831 and 690. That's where you expect positive reversals. So far, both one week and one day perspective looks really bullish. Two hours looks extremely bullish as well, with a very with a trend here around 28.88 on ADX. MACD looks good. Moving averages are looking really beautiful. Now, on the moving average band, what we get to see is that it's expected to trade on 909 on the top, 826 in the middle, and 74 70, $7.44 in the bottom. Do you expect for it to oscillate somewhere on the top band as you get to see uh, for the last five days? Now, Stochastic Fast and Stochastic Slow are both showing a very strong trend that is going to see another leg up, and that is amazing. So, what we're getting to see here is 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74, 73.74
it, the blue lines are above the red lines and something like that we've seen sometime before, I believe, around this region here. You get to see last time we've seen that, that was really nice push. So, moving on towards the Fibonacci retracement. Significant support levels sit right currently at 910, 737, 616, 494. Significant resistance at 1131. Now comes to the price line actions as we like to do to signify where the resistances and supports are. So 927 or 928 seems to be the current support. Then 889. Then we're diving down to 866. 843. 825. 750. Then we drop down to 654. 2603. Current resistances are $9.70, $10.33, and then up to almost around 11 bucks. So you get to see that it's a lot easier to see that ceiling up. And just to keep our minds um, off, like let's say we want to make sure the current resistance 973, there is a resistance around there. We did mention around 970, and around 10.48 is the resistance before 11.31. So, 1008. So, okay, so it is accurate. Now, Ed, what do you think about this one? Do you think it is going to see another push? Um, if I was to bet whether it's going to see a drop or a push, it definitely, I would say, a push is in um, is not far off. Now, this is the trend line that it's above, and above the 838 currently, it is considered still to be bullish. If it does drop below this trend line, we might be a little bit in danger. Now, the big question is, do I think it's going to get a new 52 high? Definitely, I do think that it has a lot of potential here. Uh, there is a lot of catalyst coming up, not from the company itself, but in general, from uh, the new administration coming in, the push to green energy. This one has hydrogen production, hydrogen uh, stations, and the list goes on, and even storage. So I definitely do think this one has a future. There... Price over sale, sorry, price over earnings looks undervalued, while the price over book and price over uh, sales are really hurting. So that is something very interesting for me, and it is scary for me because when I'm looking at it, when you look at price over book and price over sales, and you see that massive difference between SP500, it tells you that it's not moving on on the book value, it's moving on on intrinsic value, and that is the market we're in generally. Given that the market we're in generally stays on this massive euphoria, we can expect this one to continue on growth year over year and has a future. Do I think it is possible to trade this one and sell above 10 bucks? Yes, I definitely do think. There's a lot of different things going on and this one is in the good place and the right time in a transition off presidency. What do you think about this ticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like. You have a wonderful day.